This video is going to quickly cover hypothesis testing for a population correlation coefficient. There are five steps that you need to do. First thing you need to do is state your null and alternative hypotheses. Now whenever you are stating your hypotheses, you always want to use the variable rho, which represents the population correlation coefficient. And there are different um, pairs of hypotheses that you're going to use depending on what you're trying to test. If you're talking about correlation being significant, you would use this set. If you're talking about it being negative, you would use this set. And if you're talking about it po being positive, you would use this set. After you state your null and alternative hypotheses, you're going to enter the values for x and y into the lists of your calculator. And then you're going to find the p-value using the LINREG t-test. Once you find your p-value, value, you can compare it to alpha, and that'll tell you if you reject or fail to reject HO. And then you can use the following chart to determine how you are going to um, word your conclusion. Okay, let's use the following example to perform a hypothesis test for population correlation coefficient. So the following chart represents the number of hours students spent studying and their grades on the final exam. Okay, so the studying is X and test score is Y. Can you conclude that there is a significant linear correlation between the data at alpha equals 0 0.05? Okay, so what I want to do is first figure out my null and alternative hypothesis. So since it says significant linear correlation and it doesn't say anything about positive or negative, that means we're going to use this first set up here, the one where rho is equal to 0 and rho is not equal to 0. So HO is rho is equal to 0, HA is rho is not equal to 0, and the claim is going to be HA because it says um, that we're kind of claiming that there's a significant linear correlation. Um, otherwise, it would have said that there is no significant correlation. Okay, so now we want to find um, our p-value, and to do that, we're going to have to put these values into L1 in our calculator and these values into L2. You do that by hitting stat and then enter for edit, and just enter the values in here. I already did it from the previous example, so I'm going to leave them there. Now I want to hit stat, go over to tests, and if you hit up, because it's kind of far down, you want to pick option F, LINREG t-test. Okay. Now X list is asking what list is are your X values in? We put it in L1. Y list, we put the Y values in L2. If it happens to say something different, you can get L2, um, L1 by doing second and then the number one, and you can get L2 by doing second and then the number two. Okay, make sure frequency says one, and then pick the alternative hypothesis. In this case, I'm using the not equal to one, so I'm going to leave that there. You can skip this piece here and go down to calculate, enter. So my p-value is equal to this right here, and notice it's in scientific notation, so that means I need to move my decimal place six units to the left. So one, two, three, four, five, one, six, five. So that is definitely less than alpha, so that means we reject HO. Okay. Well, HO was not our claim, our claim was HA, so if I want to determine how to write my final answer, I look here. Is your claim HO? No. Do you reject HO? Yes. So we say there is enough evidence to support. claim that there is a significant linear correlation. And you can go on further and say between studying and test scores, I'm not going to write all of that though. 